My dear students, today we shall be discussing the life cycle of gymnosperms. As a student of botany, you must be all familiar with the word gymnosperm. But today, before coming on to the main topic, that is the life cycle, we shall do a, a bit of introduction about the gymnosperms. The word gymnosperm is a combination of two Latin words, gymnos meaning naked and sperma meaning seed. In short, it is commonly known as naked seeded plants. The word gymnosperm was coined by Theophrastus in the year 300 BC. And these gymnospermous plants, they include the plants with naked seeds, and these plants are called naked seeded plants because in the formation of the ovule, the ovules are not protected by the ovary wall and it has a single integument. Therefore, in the gymnosperms, the formation of fruit does not arise. At present, there are about 72 genera and 600 50 species of gymnosperms. In India, we usually come across about 15 genera and 52 species of living gymnosperms. The most common among them are the Pinus, Cycus, Ephedra, Netum, and Zingo. And this Zingo biloba, it is also known as a living fossil because it has been growing from time immemorial without any modification till today. And the Pinus and the Cycus, locally it is known as the Usan Pambi and the Yendang Pambi. And these gymnospermous plants, they form the major forest types of our planet, having the greatest economic importance in the form of timber, lumber, and wood pulp. Continuing with the introduction of the gymnosperms, we see the position of the gymnosperms in the plant kingdom. In the plant kingdom, usually there are four divisions. The first one is the telophyta, the second one is the bryophyta, the third one is the pteridophyta, and the fourth one is the spermatophyta. The first one that is the telophyta it has included the algae, fungi, and the lichens. And the second one, bryophyta, it is a non-vascular cryptogram with a body having telloid in nature. And the third one is the pteridophyta, that is a vascular cryptogram with a body having a presence of true roots, stem, and leaves. And the fourth one, spermatophyta, it is also known as the phenerogams. And these spermatophyta or the uh, seed-bearing plants, it is again subdivided into two gymnospermy, which is also known as the naked seeded plants, and the angiospermy, the closed seeded plants. As we have discussed earlier also, the gymnosperms, why they are called the naked seeded is that the ovule, it is protected only by a single integument and there is no ovary wall and there is no formation of fruit. Let us come to the main topic that is the life cycle. In the life cycle of a gymnosperm, it always starts from the sporophytic plant that is the mature gymnosperm plant. And this sporophytic plant, in most of the gymnosperms, it is always divided into male plant and the female plant. Of course, in Pinus, that is Uchan Pambi, there is no differentiation of the male and the female plant. There is only one single plant which bears the, both the male and the female reproductive parts. So the male plant and the female plant the male plant bears the male cone and the female plant bears the female cone. The male cone, it is nothing but a compact, compact structure of the microsporophyll. And the female cone, 
It is also a compact structure of the megasporophyll. And this microsporophyll, again, they contain the microsporindium, and the megasporophyll, they contain the megasporindium. So there is further development in the microsporindium and the megasporindium. And then it comes to a stage where it forms the microspore mother cells and the megaspore mother cells. As soon as there is the formation of the mother cells, it is ready to undergo reduction division, which is also known as meiosis. And this meiosis is a very important part in the life cycle of the gymnosperms because from starting from the sporophytic plant up till the formation of the spore mother cells, there is the number of the chromosome number is always deployed, that is twice a number of chromosomes. And this twice a number of chromosome has to be reduced, so it has to undergo meiosis. And by meiosis, the microspore mother cells give rise to the microspores and the megaspore mother cells give rise to the megaspores. But in the case of the megaspores, the four megaspores form as a result of meiosis, only one is functional, the other three, they de degenerate or get aborted. And but in the case of the microspores, the microspores, all the microspores, they develop into the male gametophyte or germinate into the male gametophyte. And this male gametophyte is also known as microgametophyte. And the megaspore, they germinate into the female gametophyte, which is also called the megagametophyte. In the next step, the gametophytes, both the gametophytes, they are endosporic in nature. That means they, the development of the gametophyte is taking place inside the spore walls. The female gametophyte, it gives rise to the egg or ovum or oospear. And the male gametophyte, it gives rise to the male gamete, which is also known as the sperm. So, as soon as these gametes are formed, they undergo syngamy or fertilization. So, up till the formation of the gametes, starting from the megaspores and the microspores, the chromosome number is maintained as haploid, that is, n number of chromosomes. And these haploid number of chromosomes that are present in the egg and the sperm, they unite together during fertilization or syngamy and again the chromosome number becomes twice n when zygotes are formed. And in case of the gymnosperms, the fertilization process is known as siphonogamous type because the male gametes are present on a long pollen tube in order to fertilize with the egg. And after the formation of the zygote, it develops into the embryo. The embryo is nothing but the seed. And this zygote, when it develops into the embryo, it directly develops into the embryo in some gymnospermous plants, but in some gymnospermous plants, the zygote undergoes a resting or a dormant phase. That is, it does not develop, uh, uh, it develops directly into the embryo. But in some plants, there is a dormant or resting phase. So the embryo gives rise to the young sporophytic plant, and ultimately, in due course of time, the young sporophytic plant develops into the mature sporophytic plant, that is the fully grown gymnospermous plant. So like this, the life cycle
continues. And in the life cycle, we always see the alternation of generation. That means it has a distinct sporophytic phase and an indistinct gametophytic phase. And in the gymnosperms, the alteration of generation is always heterologous or heteromorphic. That means all the stages that are occurring in the life cycle, starting from the sporophytic plant up till meiosis, then up, then syngamy fertilization, then up to the formation of the zygote, then to the development of the mature sporophytic plant, it, they are all different. That is, they are not alike with one another. So that is why it is known as heterologous or heteromorphic. So this is all about the life cycle of the gymnosperm. So today we have discussed in detail the life cycle of gymnosperms. So my dear students, if you have any doubt or query, you can contact the following link that is given below.